all cell phones. And please stand and join in singing our open hymn, number 327, Sweet, Sweet Spirit. Thank you. 
by the mystery of today's great feast, sanctify your whole church in every people and nation. For on we pray the gifts of the Holy Spirit across the face of the earth. And with the divine grace that was at work when the gospel was first proclaimed, fill now once more the hearts of believers. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever.
instructions could very well have been in Chinese. I had no idea part A and B and C and D and you know, this. But I thought I could do this without reading the manual. No. Couldn't do it. I kind of had a friend of mine who literally read the manual. So I realized that in most circumstances, we need a manual, a guide. When I celebrate Mass, I have a guide. The book tells me, in red, stand, sit, arms out, don't read too long. <laughs> So, most things in life have a manual. Well, when Jesus returned to the Father, and, and last weekend, we celebrated the Feast of the Ascension. And right before Jesus returns to the Father, he said, oh, I have two more commands. Two more commands to give you. Does anybody know what those two commands were? They're called the final commands. Preach the gospel, baptize all the nations. It's called the Great Commission. The Great Commission. All right? Baptize, preach the gospel. And then he said, see ya. So the 11 apostles, there are 11 now because Judas <coughs> is dead. said, well, how are we going to do this? Hey, if you can Lives, they turn to Peter because Jesus appoints Peter as the head. Says, "Well, he puts you in charge. How do you want to do this?" And Peter probably thought, "I have no idea. There was no manual. There was no guidebook to tell them how to do this." Jesus just said, "Do it." So they struggle with how are we going to be faithful to the Great Commission? And so they're in the upper room, and the upper room is where they celebrated the Last Supper. They're waiting for guidance, somehow, some guidance, and they're in the upper room, and somehow Mary is also there with them. Somebody said, well, that's because they needed somebody to cook. <laughs> you know, men are helpless. Which is a terrible thing to say. <laughs> so they're just waiting, and all of a sudden, we hear from Scripture there's a mighty roar. Thunder. We, oh, we had it a couple nights ago. Remember the thunder we had? rests upon them, and that is the Spirit that came down, and at that moment, sister brother, at that moment, the church is born, the church is born, they come out of the upper room, and when they leave, they realize, as we have read in the first day, that they literally understand all the languages that people were speaking. It is the power of this spirit, it is the power of, of this force that allows the apostles to go out and begin preaching the gospel. Now remember, there is no New Testament. It doesn't exist. It doesn't exist. So they had to rely on two things. Certainly the spirit, the Holy Spirit, but also this. It's called the oral tradition. The oral tradition. Now, I don't know about you, but as I got older, I can't remember yesterday. <laughs> and so, the first gospel comes into being about 30 years or so after the resurrection. 
and I don't mean this <laughs> Now, what would human nature say? To respond in kind. So move back. But, you know, that little nagging voice that's playing this somewhere that we all have that says, because you just want to lash out. Not to be. Or if you take your job. Or at school, if you're in school. Or uh, uh, social circles. One of the prevalent uh, activities of uh, offices and you know, this place of work is gossip. Right? Even within families. Now, I know, because I've been around almost all the parishes, except St. Augustine doesn't have any gossip. <laughs> right? <laughs> Nobody wants to I learned 
the Spirit of God continues to unite us as a people and enables us to pray and intercede for the needs of others. Drawn together in God's love, we offer our prayers to the Father.
and graciously lead us into all truth. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It's truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and eternal God. For bringing your past from mystery to completion. You bestow the Holy Spirit today on those you have made your adopted children by uniting them to your only begotten Son. The same Spirit as the church came to birth, open to all peoples the knowledge of God, and brought together the many languages of the earth in profession of the one faith. Therefore, overcome with pastoral joy, every lane, every people give you praise, and even the heavenly powers with angelic hosts sing together the identity Glory is the of life.
have mercy on us all, we pray. That with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, the Blessed Joseph, her spouse, and St. Augustine, and the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints, who have pleased you throughout the years, and merit before heirs of eternal life, and we praise and glorify you for your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father,
Oh God, we bestow heavenly gifts upon your church. Safeguard, we pray, the grace you have given, that the gift of the Holy Spirit pour out upon her. May we take all its force and then be spiritual food, and they gave her abundance of eternal redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you. 